Hello and a very warm welcome here on Canal 2 English and the program is The Forum. Our guest today is Mr. George Njimele. He's a publisher and writer or author of children's book. With him we are going to talk about the sector that is the publishing industry in this country and other topics as well and other topics. I would like to announce it to you right now. We are going to talk about the publishing industry. We are going to talk also about terrorism and also the problem of press card issuance in Cameroon. Is, is it the Cameroon government who has the right to issue press card and are the conditions prescribed for any journalist who wishes to or who wants to have a press card? appropriate or is it a strategy by this government to exclude some individuals that they don't want to be in the core? These are the questions that George Njimele and I are going to talk about. So please do not go away. We shall be right back after this. Good morning once again. For those of you who are just tuning in, you are on to Canal 2 International and the program is the forum. Our guest today is George Njimele. George Njimele, as I announced at the introduction of this program, is a publisher and author of children's book. We are going to talk about publishing in this country. Mr. George Njimele, a very warm welcome in this program. Thank you very much. Thank you for inviting me. At the long last, you're here today. Really, really. It hasn't been easy because of my busy schedule. Okay. Yes. Now, let me ask you a question. You are into the publishing industry. and. Yes. How, what is the situation of the publishing industry in Cameroon today? Okay, it is a quite a growing industry. Uh, presently, I can say it is uh, going forward, but uh, we wouldn't say it is already successful because it has a lot of problems just like the other sectors in the country. Uh, it started uh, long ago. The early publishers, they had problems because we were still using books. Uh, prescribed or books coming from uh, the Western world. But today the government has made efforts and uh, has uh, asked some Cameroonians to conceive and write books and publish, which can be used in the national program. Books that uh, reflect our cultural realities. So with that now, we have the opportunity to come in and try to publish. But it remains a challenging domain because uh, we don't yet have a good reading public. We don't yet have a good reading public. And that reminds me of uh, an article written by the, uh, the weekly newspaper Le Four, the English version, where, uh, denouncing the fact that Cameroonians and Africans in general don't read, and in particular, young Cameroonians don't read. Now, in, when we talk about publishing industry in Cameroon, yes. it is not a holistic, it is divided culturally, that is linguistically. Yes. And are you into, the, into both, public, in both languages, as is French and English, or you are only into the English uh, publishing sector, publishing uh, English okay. books. Yeah. Okay, now as a beginner, uh, we just started, as I will say, and uh, we are publishing just uh, English language text. And uh, what we publish for now, we publish educational material, that is books that are meant for school use. Because as I said, we don't have uh, a reading public as yet. People are still very locked down to read. Uh, people don't have that enthusiasm to get into the books and get knowledge from there. So, but when a book is prescribed in a school, you see there is that tendency for it to be used because teachers uh, put pressure and the government too puts pressure that these books are important, they should be read. And uh, that is why you see children running for books and parents because they know they are going to be evaluated uh, during examinations on those books. So people read because they know they will benefit something that is immediate, not with the aim to have knowledge, long lasting knowledge. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, publishing, you know, we have people publishing in English, we have people publishing in French, and we have also some publishers who are big enough and they're publishing in both English and French. But uh, some of us who are still op operating at a small scale, we are publishing uniquely in English. Uniquely in English. And now yes. you said, besides publishing, you are an author of children's book. Yes. And now in a society, a country that people don't read. Yes. Do you think there's a future in your sector? You produce children's book, but is there any future? Yes, there is a future. Uh, it's quite a challenge that I took, but I think it is going to work because I have to do a lot of work. You know, we are the pioneer uh, writers of children's books in Cameroon. So as a pioneer writer, you have to do a lot of sensitization. 
you have to sensitize the parents. You have to sensitize the children themselves and the teachers. You have to tell them that this material is important for the children. It would be an important tool for the development of the child. So this said, there is also the government that uh, is also helping, you know, by prescribing the material. We have literature, okay, in our school system. And I write literature. I write literature for primary and secondary. These books are used in the classroom. So there is a future for it because when the books are prescribed, obviously uh, children will buy and use. But then that is not enough because we have to encourage people to read, not only reading for examination purposes or reading, which people should read for entertainment, people should read for knowledge, instruction. You read to get uh, cultural awareness, to know what happens within your country, to know about uh, rights, okay, customary rights, traditional rights, to keep abreast with your culture. Mm -hmm. Yes. Exactly. Now, you, 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 we, as an author and yes. a publisher, yes. well, you write, you know, you have a targeted audience, which are children. Yes. And at that stage, some of them like reading, or perhaps their parents want them to, have, to, 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 to force them to read. Yes. How can you translate what you are doing into children, the children's sector of, right, of authorship where you are, yes. into the adulthood? Because adults don't read. That's yes. the problem. You yes. see, yes. a four Cameroonian published something about it today, and you know yourself that Cameroonians and Africans don't know how, not, not, don't know how to read, don't like to read. Yes. Now, how can you devise, is there, a pro is there a way for you to devise to encourage them to develop this reading culture? Yes, I met uh, a fellow publisher, a Nigerian, and uh, I was like uh, explaining to him the problems we have here in Cameroon about uh, the reading culture. So he told me they have advanced a bit, that they had the very problems in the 80s, and uh, they had to work very hard, okay? Writing, they started with Onicha uh, literature. They wrote books for, for the mass public, they wrote very interesting literature books, you know, books that will fascinate. fascinate. Yeah, yeah, yes, books that will be quite, uh, yes, uh -huh. they, they can excite, mm -hmm. you know, just people of all ages. Mm -hmm. And they took these books to the markets. You know, people selling in shops in Nigeria, most of them are learned, uh, educated. So they took the books, very good stories, stories about their lives. And they took interest in these books. And that is how Nigeria today is developing a serious reading culture. I have a friend who is a publisher. Uh, Yoruba man, he told me he publishes literature and he prints sometimes 12,000 copies uh, for a novel, a novel that just comes out new and he's able to sell all of that. 12,000 copies? Yes, people buy. People, people buy. buy. So he told me we should be working hard and uh, truly we are doing our best. I think I am on the right foot track because I can tell you I have a lot of calls from children. I am called almost every week. That's from children. children. appreciating, yes. Yeah, well, the children adults calling don't. from Kumba. Yeah, adults, no, don't. adults don't at all. But how now do you devise a method? The Nigerian guy you met said you should write books that have a kind of frame of reference that refers to you and I. Yes. How can you now translate the Nigerian example to Cameroon. the Cameroonian context? Yes, it is possible. Uh, it's rather... Uh, unfortunate that that is not, not my priority for now. That is writing for adults. Adult, okay. Even though I will do that. Because the children's sector is very important. And I think if I concentrate on children's literature, I'm building, you see, a sector, I'm building a particular domain that will lead to people developing interest in reading tomorrow. Because the children of today will be the adults of tomorrow. tomorrow. Now, I'm not saying that the other people are adults are abandoned. But I think there are a lot of Cameroonians who are writing for adults. Uh, I think they can, you know, if we have uh, seminars, we discuss these things out. Those who are interested in writing for adults can actually get some of these messages, the example of the Nigeria and Ghana, and then begin to write what is interesting so that adults can take interest in them. Okay, let me put it another way. Yes. Uh, uh, do you think that the government needs to get involved or the government is not doing enough to help publishers to publish books that will be of interest to Cameroonians? Yes, I think the government has to do much. The government, you know, for a very long period of time decided to 
give priority to certain sectors at the detriment of others. Uh, if you look at the artistic domain in Cameroon, you see the Ministry of Culture all the time concentrates on music. Okay? Yeah, whereas music the, is not only about, uh, music, culture is not all, only it's about not, music. It's not all about music. It's because we have, you know, people who are famous, but we have writers who are also contributors in the domain and major ones. Who are so they, for, for yes. example? Can you give me the name of one Cameroonian Anglophone author who can act like a pace setter, who can pull others? Like you have the musical sector. Yes. You might like or hate Franco, but people like him. Okay. Do uh, you have a similar, yes, we uh, have an equivalent in, 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 in literature or in authorship, like writing? We have uh, famous authors and people who have written serious books like uh, Professor Bole Botake. We have uh, Francis uh, Nyamjo, who is teaching in a South African university. We have um, uh, Professor Alembong, Nola Alembong. A lot of people who are writing and writing very good books. So these are reference points. These are people that ought to be consulted so that they can sit down and then uh, sort of uh, bring up ideas on how the sector of writing can be developed in Cameroon. Okay. We have we had so many of them. Some are of late. We had uh, Batibiso, the late Batibiso. But now you all those guys you are naming are of, of a certain age. Yes. I want a guy or a lady or a man who is about let's say between thirty and forty five. Do you have any of those in Cameroon? They are. They are. They An are. anglophone. Yes, there are so sure. many of them. If Do you have you a name? To, oh um, no, no, not readily. There are so many. There, there are so, so many. many. Yes. yes now, so for many. let me give you another question. For example, if somebody has like a, a kind of autobiography. Yes. To publish. Yes. Can he come to you? Obviously, obviously. He can because come. we have a policy to publish a material from outside. Uh, but since the marketing uh, becomes, it's always a problem. That is publicity and marketing, it's a burden. And then uh, the fact that the book that you are publishing, if we look at it and we discover that it may not really uh, sell. Sell, yes. Well, so we will advise you, you can self publish, but we are going to give you uh, expert knowledge by providing our editorial services. We can proofread, we can do one or two things, we advise you on how to market your book Good. so that you go ahead and do so. Now, in, 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 in terms of, let's say, self-publishing, yes. it happens everywhere, even in the United States. That's true, yes. uh, what, do you, what are the budgets? Yes, yeah, self-publishing, you can do it on the net, on the internet. Sometimes there are some publishers that ask virtually nothing, but you know, E-publishing is a problem because but I'm saying to you, for example, Peacock Publisher, if yes. a, self, a, a, a person comes with his novel or with an autobiography, yes. he wants to self-publish yes. to you, yes. how much will he pay? Okay, editorial, we, uh, we can ask for editing fees, mm -hmm. just editing fees, depending on the volume of the work. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then uh, the subject matter. Then uh, we ask editing fees and uh, we can now supervise we give you advice on marketing for free. Mm. Editing fees alone is okay because we are just out to, to help. To help. Yes. Oh, all right. Now, okay, that's very good. I want to remind our viewers that Mr. George Njimele is, the, is a publisher and author of children's book. And his publishing firm, the name is Peacock. So he's here. Maybe if you have a book or you want to know the type of books he has published, you can, you can contact us or contact him directly. But there's one question I would like to ask before going to another subject is, Yes. Uh, I, 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 what book have you published already? You have published a number, but yes, can you give yes, us a yes. name of one or two books you have published? Okay, I published a book with a publishing house in the U.S. Uh, named uh, Rose Dog Book, Rose Dog Books, and the title of the book is a major novel. I told you I concentrate essentially on children's writing. Exactly. But it doesn't mean mm -hmm. all of what I have written is for children. Children, because yes. Because I have a major novel, Jungle Adventures. Jungle Adventures. Published in the U.S., a book I am uh, very seriously uh, struggling to see into it that is used at A-level in Cameroon. In Cameroon, yes. All right. Oh, that's then good. Then I have yes. other books. I have four books mm -hmm. that have been prescribed by the Ministry of Secondary Education. Mm -hmm. And what are the names? Forms 1 and 2. Well, I have um, mm -hmm. Mad Men and Traitors. That is drama for Form 2. There is uh, Poverty is Crazy, drama for Form 1. There is Undeserved Suffering, prose for Form 2. And there is uh, The Slave Boys, prose for Form 1. So I have four texts for Form, for form 1 and Form 2, secondary. Okay. Then I have a lot of texts for primary, because I started, first of all, with the primary school. I have uh, The Broken Calabash, King Shaba, 
the Princess of Bamba, Dr. Mayaba, House of Peace, and a host of others and host that of are being used. And uh, these are famous books in Cameroon. They are in the Cameroonian curricula. Yes. yes oh, that's yes, very good. Yes. Now, let me ask you, we are going to leave from publishing because publisher, you are always close to journalists yes. and publishers and things like that. Yes. Now, what is your take on the new rules or regulation in place by the government of Cameroon for Cameroonian journalists to have a press card? Have you, are you conversant with what is happening? Yes, yes, I know what is happening. Yeah, what is your t take on it? In fact, uh, I think uh, matters concerning journalists should be uh, allowed in the hands of journalists to handle. Uh, journalism is a delicate profession, just like writing. It's a profession whereby you can have somebody who builds up the capacity on his own and becomes a famous and a competent and efficient journalist by his own right. So we have to be very careful with such professions. You know, it's not like the medical profession where you have to train a medical doctor for 13 years to become a surgeon. Or somebody trains as a lawyer, he does law for several years to be called to the bar, okay, to practice. Mm -hmm. Journalism is different. Somebody can do journalism. He needs just a degree or an advanced level and then he starts, you know, practicing. Practice. Practicing and practice makes perfect. We have major journalists in Cameroon who did not go to a journalism school. So the government should take this into consideration. If they are to issue cuts, they should meet genuine journalists, experts, those who have pertinent ideas about journalism, so that they can sit down on a round table and decide who should be a journalist. It shouldn't be a process of exclusion. Okay, it shouldn't be a process of ex exclusion, which means that you think the government has an idea to sideline some people or some journalists that they don't like? Maybe, maybe, maybe. You have some ministers that may not be interested in certain guys, in certain uh, professionals in the domain of journalism in the country. You, it may not be the government. Because within the government, you have people. The government is made up of people. You have people who are biased, ministers, directors, who think that some people should not function at all in certain professions. I can have enemies, you know, as a writer, because maybe I've written something that somebody thinks it is against, against him. Okay, so this may be the situation. So in order to solve this kind of problem, the government should be very, very, very careful. It should call a group of people, a group of professionals that are unbiased, mm -hmm. that should sit down, okay, and then sit down on a round table and determine the rules. Who becomes a journalist? Why is it that somebody should not be a journalist? All this should be looked at. It shouldn't come from a government which may be, you know, the, uh, I can say, some kind of dictatorship, some kind of ideas that are stereotyped because they want to exclude certain people. Okay, if I understand, yes. so you share the same idea like what the Cameroonian journalism trade union, the SNG in French, yes. headed by Denis Quibo, yes. they are against the new rule by the government. So you, you share the idea. I share it. I share you share it. it. Yes. yes. Okay. yes. All right. Yes. Now, another question which I would like to ask you is on this terrorism. Yes. What is your own take on what is happening in Nigeria, in Kano, and in France? Yes, let me start with, uh, with France because uh, that is uh, the talk of the day. Why do you want to start with France? I want to start yes. with France because that, what we, we are talking about France, that is an issue that is uh, largely uh, talked about, okay, publicized. And we know why it is that way. It is that way why because is, yes. of the fact that France is a superpower. Yeah. And France, you know, is a Western country that has a lot of support. They have their brothers and sisters. We have America, we have uh, Belgium, we have uh, Britain. These are, you have, when you touch France, you have touched all these people. Now, they me, work in a group. Yes, I'm sorry to interrupt you, yes. but don't you think that they are overdoing it? Because a day before the Paris attack, there's a similar horrendous attack took place on the outskirts of Beirut. Attacks have been taking place in Cameroon, in Nigeria, but it seems not to interest Western media. But why is it that if it concerns France, it becomes an international issue? This is the problem. This is the problem. You know, France, America, 
and other countries. These are arrogant nations. They are people who believe when they breathe, we should leave. Okay? These are people who think they are untouchable. And so any slightest thing that concerns them, it becomes something that the whole world should know about. And people should feel bad. People should sympathize with them and so on and so forth. Whereas we have people being killed in northern Cameroon, the Adamawa. We have people being killed in northern Nigeria. Not long ago, students were killed, I think in Kenya. In Kenya, yes. Yes. Lots and lots of students, students yes. yes. Nothing happened. Okay. But when it concerns France, you see, the media comes in. You know they have a very powerful media. And then as they are supported, it's a superpower. So they want to focus all cameras on them. On them. Yes. Now let me ask you another question. Some people also think that it is because we Africans, we don't give enough value to our own problems. Like what happened in Kenya, how many African leaders stood up and sympathized with the Kenyans? What happened in Nigeria, nobody stood up. Is it not because we Africans don't give value to humans? Hence, our problems are not given consideration. It is not the case. We, we give value to humans. But, but how come that? How come th that? There is we, a problem. Yeah, we, we, how come our, our solidarity is weak. We, we are not solid. Do we have any solidarity at all? It is weak. Yeah, we have. A, just a bit of it. And then there is fear because these super nations are looking at us. But why? See what fear, sir? I'm sorry to interrupt you. What type of fear? The President of the Republic of Benin yes. declared a one day of national mourning in Benin. Whereas people are dying in northern Nigeria, he has never done such a thing. The, uh, the members of parliament in Ivory Coast have marched to sympathize with the killings in France. But the killings in Cameroon, the killings in Kenya, the killings in Beirut, no African, nobody cares. Do okay. you think that is normal? This is the question. This is what I would like to point out. Yes. Who organizes this? You know, these are not really the representative of the people. These are a few individuals who are to benefit something from France. You know, when you are put somewhere, okay, as a puppet leader, the obvious situation is that you will always respond to your master, you, to the dictates of your master. You have to compliment your master. You have to sympathize with him when he is in crisis. You have to attend to him so that he should be happy with you. He should always share whatever cake he has with you. Okay. That so is the situation. Are you trying to say the presidents of Ivory Coast, the president of Benin, are puppets of France, hence... Everything that happens to France, they are more interested yes. than what happens to Africans. They are gaining, and the population is not gaining anything. These are individuals who are gaining a lot, and they are afraid of their positions. Okay. That is why they do what they do, which is obvious. Let me ask you another question before we are going to round off this program. Yes. Do you understand that in Cameroon, most Cameroonians seem to celebrate at what is happening in France? Do you, can you explain to me one yes. little, yes. It is very clear, France, French policy abroad, it is very obscure and it is uh, very, very dangerous, the French policy abroad. Let me tell you, the Islam, Islamic State, those who are claiming, okay, responsibility for the, what has happened in France, for the attacks, these people, they have something to say. I have followed Muslim leaders in France, they say there are problems. There is exclusion in France. There are students in France who are French men, young Muslims in their 20s, in their 30s, that are not catered for. They are unemployed. No jobs for them. They are excluded. So they turn and see how France goes abroad to countries. They go to Libya to dethrone and kill a leader. They come to Cameroon. They are struggling to control seaports, to control this and that. And then they try to destabilize. It is wrong. They are in Syria, trying to create confusion in Syria, set, destabilize the nation. So this is what is happening, and France has to pay for all of that. And uh, do you mean to say, because France is controlling the whole parts of Cameroon, contributing, destabilizing Libya, as you are claiming, and destabilizing other African countries and Middle Eastern countries. Yes, that's why the people are happy. That is the reason why Cameroonians are happy that people have been killed in France. They are happy because they think France is not doing well. France is not behaving well as a nation. It is a superpower that goes around, you know, exploiting people economically, politically, and socially. It's a superpower. Arrogant superpower that goes around doing very horrible things across the group. That's why Radical Muslims are against all of that. 
so which means that you seem to understand but those things are radical muslim in france yes. but has that gotten to do anything in cameroon why do cameroonians should celebrate because i saw people celebrate happy that france has been attacked yes you know the history of cameroon uh, it, cameroon has had a lot of problems french intervention in cameroon is very obvious we have mentioned the the, the fact of the ports yes and there is also even the woody bridge that a French minister came here to threaten that they must be the ones to construct the bridge because, okay, they were pumping money into the construction of the bridge. But we don't like that. That is not a good policy. We have France. France stationed their military base in, in, in the north of Cameroon without asking our opinion. That is arrogance. Did some of these things, we know that some of the leaders that we may have in Cameroon will be imposed upon us by France. Okay. So we want Cameroonians to decide. All right, okay. Thank you very much, George Njimele. I want to remind televiewers that Mr. George Njimele is a publisher and author of children's book, and it was a pleasure to have him here as guest today. Mr. Njimele, it was a great pleasure. Thank, Thank you for having come to us today. Too. Thank you for inviting me. And for our mm -hmm. televiewers, please do not go away. Stay tuned to more programs on Canal Do English. Have a nice weekend, and God bless.